Okay, so I really just kind of wanted to go through how to set up some of the basic tools, how to kind of get started in the speedrun, and then I kind of want to just walk through the overall speedrun, um, kind of give some hints and tips for different areas, kind of go through it a little slower than I normally do and talk about what I'm doing as opposed to trying to go as quickly as possible. Try and explain why certain things are done and answer any questions that somebody might have just right out of the bat. Uh, I welcome anybody to contact me after they watch these and ask any questions or point out anything that they think might be better so we can try it out. Uh, these probably are by no means perfect. There's probably still a lot of stuff that we can do in the run to improve it that we may not have noticed because there's not a whole lot of people running this as of yet. Um, so to start, I have a couple tools up on my screen that I wanted to kind of go through real quick, just show kind of a base way to set these up. You don't necessarily have to have no board, but you will have to have live splits. Um, you may notice my live splits is that bright green. That's how I've got it set up. If you see like right above me here, that's how I have that set up so you can see the background. I have, It's basically the green screen effect. Uh, you don't have to do that. I do that personally just so I can have a slightly larger timer on my screen without it impeding everything behind it. So for live splits, the way I have my splits set up, and you don't have to set them up like this, but this is how I do it. I start with a negative 14 second timer because that's how long it takes for me to gain control of my character from the time that I use my, uh, there's an audio input at the very beginning that I use for starting my timer. And it's 14 seconds from that till character control. Um, I use subsplits personally so I can keep track of when I finish Greenview, when I finish Richie Rich. So basically, that's what these, uh, if you look at the dashes there, the dashes tell the gate, tell live splits that these are subsplits of Greenview. So when we go back to the timer here, Greenview is the main split with all those other ones that were above it as the subsplit. And then when you go down, it shows you Richie instead. And so it'll show you the best time for the overall split of Greenview and the overall time of Richie, and then all the subsplits in there. Once again, you don't have to set it up that way. You can set up your timer however it works best for you. As long as it has the beginning and end time, I'm, we're happy. That's all you have to have. It's just helpful for when running through the game, figuring out where problems are, having all of these other splits. Um, I know myself, I split, I choose to split each split when I leave the area from stealing items. Uh, I know other people do it on the XP window when they close the XP window. So again, that's something that's that you can choose how you want to do it as long as you're consistent and it's helpful to you, do it that way. The only thing that matters is beginning and end as far as timing for a run for submission. Uh, to get the green screen, you have to go down to Edit Layout. Uh, this is my current layout. I'll leave this here for a second so you guys can just look at it. Uh, this is how I have it set up. I, I like having the little bars there so that way when I'm looking at it, I can clearly see all the different parts very quickly. Because I'm not looking at the uh, same thing you guys are looking at. You guys have no green background, nothing like that. You guys don't have those bars because it doesn't pick them up. So when I look at it, I have it set up one way. When you guys see it, it's a little different. So I'll go through my layout settings just real quick, click through all of them and scroll down so people can pause if they want to copy it. Um, I would really encourage people to take the time to set it up how they want if they're going to speedrun a lot because you're going to be looking at the timer a lot, and you're going to want the information on the timer that you find useful. 
Uh, if it's not useful to you, don't bother with it. If you're streaming and you want something that's useful to your stream, go ahead and put that on there too so people can see it. But ultimately it comes down to you're the runner, figure out what's helpful to you. Uh, maybe some runners will find it way more helpful to have less individual segments on the screen at once. So they only want to show like the next one or two segments because they don't want to be concentrating so much on any time gain or loss, but they want to just concentrate on going fast. And that's fine. It, it, figure out what works for you and do that. So I've gone through all my settings. I'm not going to really talk through them. The only really important part is going back here to lay out background color green for me so I can set up the green screen. And I'll show you how to do that in a few moments if you want to do that as well. Once again, not something you have to do, but it's something that I do. So I'll show you how to do it just in case you want to. Uh, no board is something I've just recently added. I haven't played around with it too much. Um, I literally just use a predefined keyboard that I loaded up right there. These are the category, the keyboard definition, and the keyboard style that I personally just decided to use. Um, I chose, of course, green background so I could do the same thing, have the background hidden. Um, as you can see, it just kind of lights up as you do stuff. You can see when the mouse moves, mouse clicks, all that fun stuff. So... There's not really a whole lot to go through there. You can edit it. You can move keys. You can remove keys. You can add in keys by editing. I didn't personally do that, and I don't really know a whole lot about setting that up, so I'm not going to go over that in great detail. It was just something I wanted to touch on. So that's those two programs that I use. Uh, the one problem I've run into with Noboard in particular is I've had trouble where when it's minimized and I start my streaming and recording software it doesn't want to show up. So I have to have it open when I open my streaming software for it to pick it up. So that brings us to setting up the uh, green screen. And yeah, that's going to be fun right there. So I'm actually going to change what is being seen here real quick. So in order to set up the green screen, we're going to have to deal with this. You want to go to, I'll use no board, and go to the properties. Uh, sorry, not properties, filters. You're going to want to go to filters, and you're going to want to set up a chroma key filter. Obviously green, because that's the background color. And that will remove, I haven't adjusted any other settings for it. I have literally just changed it to green as the background color. So it picks it up, removes the green and replaces it with the whatever's behind it. So you can see through it to the game. That's all you have to do for the green screen, as far as I've found. There may be more advanced things you can do with it and play around with it, but that's all I've had to do to get rid of the background. I did the same thing with live splits. It's literally just a chroma key filter. That is so trippy. I love it. So... Now I'm going to go through just a few minor things as far as like in the game and I'm going to hide no board and I'm going to hide live splits just for a little bit so it's easier to see what I'm doing in Thief Simulator. So give me just one second to make it so it captures my mouse so you guys can see what I'm doing on the game and we'll go through a couple things as far as minor things you can do to help yourself out pretty quickly. Uh, one big thing that I've personally found helps is, <clears throat> excuse me, one and three are normally to go between tabs in a menu. I have rebound that to Q and E. It makes it a lot easier, especially because I tend to accidentally fat finger. And for live splits, F5 and F3 and F2, are my keybinds that interact with live splits and I will accidentally finger fat finger F2 and F3 when I was trying to go through tabs. So I would reset my timer mid-run while trying to change a tab. That was no good for me. 
So I changed it to Q and E. It allows me to quickly move through the tabs, and I'm still right by WASDA to move through those tabs, through, move through the menus in those tabs. So that was one big thing. Um, another thing I've noticed a lot of people don't remember is you can go to third person in the car by hitting C. So when you're in the car, hit C, and you'll go to third person. It'll stay in third person. Uh, that is immensely useful for not accidentally hitting pedestrians. You might still accidentally hit pedestrians, but it makes it a lot easier to avoid them and see them. Uh, let's see here. Another one was Mark Target Q. My middle mouse button sucks. It's very hard for me to click it quickly. So instead, I've rebounded to Q, which means when I'm trying to mark a camera or mark a tenant, I can just spam Q and move over them, and I'll hit them. It's a heck of a lot easier to do that than trying to spam my middle mouse button while moving my mouse around. I'm not super good with a mouse to begin with as far as accuracy, so that has been immensely beneficial to me. Uh, I don't think there's anything else as far as keybinds. I'm going to turn this back up a little bit. So, when you're going into a run for the speed run, whether it's green view percent, story percent, whatever, you have to have in this bottom left-hand corner of the screen that I'm currently hiding with my webcam, so I'll move that, is the version number. The version number for a speedrun, when submitted, has to be visible. Because so much seems to change between version numbers that they really aren't compatible with each other. Uh, we've gotten major time saves from new implementations of things. We've had new houses added that give massive swifts, massive swings in time for how long it takes. So ultimately, we really can't have people running on old versions and new versions against each other. We have separate categories set up for old versions, if you happen to want to do an old version. But the main leaderboard is the current version of the game. Unless we happen to find some massive glitch in one of the versions of the game, then that will probably become the main version, unless something major happens. So, that being said, I'm going to change my profile here. You have to also, when you start, include profile creation and go basically right in. Um, the reasoning behind that is simply there are a lot of re really weird things you can do by editing the profile, and we need to avoid that being even a possibility.